In this video, I want to go through a CFA level one exam style question devoted to the trainer ratio, one of the minor topics in the portfolio management section of your curriculum. So uh, if this is something you want to get right in the exam, I suggest you keep watching and let's get solving. So this is the question which I want us to have a go at. The following performance information is available about three investment portfolios. We've got X, Y and Z the returns on them, also the standard deviation for each portfolio and its beta, so sensitivity to market risk. The return on the market portfolio is 2.3% with a standard deviation of 1.8 and the risk-free rate of return is 0.5%. Which portfolio offers the best performance as measured by the trainer ratio? And it's a simple choice between X, Y and Z. Now, this... Um, concept of the trainer ratio is, at least in your curriculum, placed at the very end of the relevant chapter where the CAPM model is um, introduced and I fear that there is a risk you'll never get to it. You may run out of time. So uh, I decided to create a question on it. So what is the trainer ratio? This is simply, well, it's, it's very similar to the sharp ratio, which you may know from your earlier studies. So it's like a sharp, but it's got something different in the denominator. So what we're going to have is the uh, return on the portfolio minus the return on the risk-free asset, just like you would have with the sharp ratio, with one exception. In the sharp ratio, what you would be dividing by would be the standard deviation. Now, let me write this down. Um, which is a measure of total risk. So that's the case under sharp. But with the trainer ratio, I'm going to wipe this off or I'm going to cross this out because we don't care about total risk anymore. We're in, sort of in the world of CAPM, capital asset pricing model, and we care about systematic risk only. So as you may have guessed, instead of having total risk, I'm going to have a measure of our systematic risk, which is the beta of the portfolio. So systematic risk. So this is a measure of the return in excess of the risk-free rate as related to the amount of risk that we take on to get this extra return, the measure of systematic risk here being beta. And that's how we um, derive the trainer ratio, a very simple concept. So let's see what this will uh, give for the three different portfolios, X, Y, and Z. Okay, for X, we've got the return on it as 2%. And we deduct the return on the risk-free uh, asset. That's zero point five. That's from the uh, that's from the uh, from this sentence. So minus zero point five, and we obviously divide by the uh, beta, which for the first one was zero point eight. So let me quickly do this on my calculator. I'm not showing you the calculator because these computations don't really uh, are not really that difficult. 2 minus 0 0.5, that's 1.5, divided by 0 0.8. Okay, for the first one, it's 1.875. Now, for the second one, it's going to be a return of 4.5% minus, um, once again, the same risk-free rate. That was 0 0.5, wasn't it? And we divide by its beta, which was 1.6. So 4.5 minus 0 0.5 divided by 1.6. So for the second portfolio, that is two and a half. And for the third one, so for Z, we take the return 6.2% minus the risk-free rate again, which is 0 0.5 divided by the beta 2.5. So 6.2 minus 0 0.5 divided by 2.5. Okay, 2.28. Right, so which one is going to be the best? Well, you want to have the optimal, the, high, the highest amount of excess return for the risk being taken. So we want to maximize this relationship and the portfolio, therefore, which offers the best performance as measured by the trainer ratio is going to be the one with the highest trainer ratio. That's portfolio Y. And this, therefore, gives us very clearly answer B.